It is time now for Night Court. On the docket tonight, Netflix facing a lawsuit for defamation, fraud, and invasion of privacy. Now, the plaintiffs claim that Netflix duped them into participating in this unscripted series called Afflicted. They allege Netflix producers were unethical in portraying them as lazy, crazy hypochondriacs. So let's bring in tonight's legal eagles, civil rights attorney Robert Patillo and general counsel for the National Center for Life and Liberty, David Gibbs. Thank you both for being here tonight. Delighted to be here, Shannon. <laughs> okay, so Netflix describes this as kind of an inside look at people dealing with chronic illnesses and really searching for answers. The people say that's what they sign on to. The plaintiffs now say, though, uh, in Exhibit A, their complaint that was filed in Los Angeles, says plaintiffs were duped by defendants into participating in a salacious reality television program that questioned the existence of their chronic illnesses and portrayed plaintiffs as lazy, crazy hypochondriacs and are and or malingerers who were deserving of scorn and who in fact have received scorn and abuse because of defendants' cruel and duplicitous actions. Robert. Oh, well, let's understand. There's a written contract in this case. The parties had the opportunity to review the contract, to have it reviewed by their counsel. They signed waivers to be part of this uh, this documentary, and they had the ability to leave the production at any point in time if they felt that they were being uh, portrayed unfairly. Not to mention the fact that I, I've not seen the full, the full contract. It was not produced. But I'm sure there was a uh, there was waivers in there. There was also an arbitration uh, clause in there, as most contracts have, which determines how these cases will be adjudicated. Instead of filing a hundred million dollar lawsuit, then you go to arbitration with the, uh, with the parties involved. So the idea that because you don't like the way the product, the work product is that came out that you get to sue is kind of ridiculous. I'm on Fox right now. If I don't like the way the internet clip comes out of me talking on Fox right now, that doesn't mean I sue Fox for not for liking me, the, uh, the... No, definitely not you. <laughs> no, but I don't, that, that doesn't mean I get to sue because I don't like the outcome the of what happened. Portrayed. Okay, so in Exhibit B, um, Dan Partland, a representative for Dan Partland, who's the president of the Doc Shop Productions, executive producer of this thing, um, when contacted about some of the objections that people had after the fact, they said, our intention was to give the world a compassionate window into the difficulties of patients and families suffering from elusive and misunderstood illnesses to humanize their struggle and to show that struggle in all its complexity. David, how do you respond to our Exhibit B, their explanation? Uh, they failed miserably. Um, what Netflix did for their own profit and they have all the power, they have all the ability to dictate the terms. They found these people that were vulnerable, dealing with these tragic health issues, and instead of doing what they told them they were gonna do, which was they were gonna document, get experts, look at this objectively, they turned it into a mockery and almost kind of bashed them fraudulently. And the problem with this, Shannon, is not just a bad television show or a bad newspaper article, but with the internet and the advent of the new media, uh, this stays forever grandchildren that aren't even born yet are going to see this. Netflix makes all the money and they sit there and abuse these vulnerable people and then they want to turn around and say, oh, but we're not responsible. You know, you can sue a doctor for malpractice, you can sue a lawyer for malpractice, but Netflix, oh, God forbid that we would hold them accountable for lying and fraudulently abusing vulnerable people. Well, and the plaintiffs make all kinds of claims. They say that um, they were forced into treatments or kind of pushed into things or even when their doctor said, hey, this won't work for you, it's not good treatment, then Netflix would portray them as turning down a treatment that should have been reasonable. Well, now Netflix is playing doctor without a medical license. That's well, another crime that might that, not even be in their case. But, 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 but Robert, I mean, it's 50 pages, I think, of this in the complaint saying all the ways that they felt like they were told it was going to be a sympathetic view and what turned out um, to be was something that made them, in manipulated situations, they allege by Netflix, made them look like they were not good, responsible, intelligent, healthy, mentally healthy people. Well, well, this is, of course, the plaintiff's complaint against Netflix. We're not reading Netflix's uh, response to that. And let's understand, these people had the ability to leave the production at any point in time that they felt uncomfortable. And they felt they were being forced into medical procedures that they, um, that they didn't want to take. They could leave the production. This is all voluntary. This is all contracting that they signed on to. They had the ability to review these contracts. So when you sign up for something as an adult person who has the full capacity to do so, then you can cannot complain thereafter and sue them outside of the, uh, the terms of the agreement. All right, quick final word. Our president talks about fake news. Netflix is doing abusive news, distortion, and it needs to be held accountable. They're making all the money. Okay, and by the way, we did reach out to them for a specific comment. I, they didn't give us a comment. I don't think they've commented formally on this lawsuit yet, but they will eventually have to in court. So, Legal Eagles, thank you very much, Robert and David. Good to have you both.